Okay, we're going to look at um, section 2.11, 2.11 of the syllabus, and really we're comparing HCl. G means gaseous, in the gaseous form, Oops. and um, AQ means aqueous, which means dissolved in water. So the idea is you've got a beaker of water, there's your water, uh, what you would do is you dissolve your HCl into there and the question is how does that differ from HCl that's gaseous um, HCl that's gaseous you should be aware gaseous particles are spread out now remember that um, HCl is covalently bonded so I'm going to say that's your hy hy hydrogen atom and that's your Cl atom and what we've got when it's HCl gaseous is you've got a few of those molecules floating around um, each one of these here is one molecule but the idea is that um, because they're arranged in the gas they're moving around they're spread out um, that's your gaseous we need to compare that to aqueous hydrogen chloride and to do that what we're going back to is to have a look at this stuff here now this stuff here you'll remember hopefully is NaCl and remember that giant ionic oops, ionic lattice that's that structure where you've got the alternating positive negative sorry negative positive negative positive negative positive ions and it's arranged in that 3D structure. Well, this is one crystal here of sodium chloride, and these are the water molecules here. Um, as soon as you put it in there, this diagram shows that the Cl's, Cl minuses, and the Na pluses break up in water. And so eventually we get this situation where we've got loads of water around here in the third diagram, and then we've got chloride ions and sodium ions separated throughout the substance. So the idea is when it's dissolved, when it's aqueous, you've got those positive positive plus VE and negative mi oops, minus VE, it's my shorthand, ions spread out in water. So these, remember, are ions. And for anything to dissolve in water, that process is called dissociation. You've got to have if anything is going to dissolve in water, substances have to dissociate, which means breaks up into the positive and negative ions and the spreading around the water. So let's now have a look at how that compares, because remember, what we're trying to do is compare gaseous hydrogen chloride, which is this one here, to aqueous hydrogen chloride. And we use this as a route into that, because you're, you should be aware of sodium chloride. Now, let's look at this, which is hydrogen chloride. So here, you can see your hydrogen chloride molecules, H. Cl, and you add them into the water, in they go, and what started to happen here is again that process there that says dissociation. So in this beaker, what we've got is H plus ions and Cl minus ions. There's your H plus. Oops, that's not your H plus. There's your H plus ion there, and this one happens to be a Cl minus ion. And the idea is that sodium chloride, sorry, hydrogen chloride, when it dissolves in water, it breaks up into this positive and negative ion thing, and that's literally swimming around in the water. So the water's unaffected, but the HCl is split up into positive and negative ions. And remember, one of the key tests there is if you've got ions, which are free to move, If you've got ions, which are free to move, then it's going to conduct electricity. Conduct electricity. Whoops, spelled that wrong. Conduct electri electricity. Terrible handwriting, sorry about that. Hopefully that's all clear.